I think we got uh, very interesting uh, presentations this morning. Uh, a lot of questions, I think, uh, on, uh, out of the, these presentations. And um, uh, I would like to start with some questions to the, 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 the friends here, but uh, I want also you to raise questions to, the, to the, 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 the presenters, so to have a, a more interaction than a, an internal discussion among us, which is, mm, wouldn't make, I think, that much sense. But just to, to break the ice, um, I, I have a question which is for, for every one of you, but I will start with luck, with the luck since you were the first one. And um, what uh, impressed me in uh, dealing with uh, the, all the process of transformation, all the innovation process, what uh, actually was uh, um, remarkable, in my opinion, is the, the need of having a persisting effort over the time. No? Yeah. Very often, this is uh, instead is something which is not happening uh, that much. And uh, so there are discontinuities that are uh, eventually affecting the possibility to actually have a long-term perspective and vision. So what were the key elements, key favorable factors, or also on the other end, the mind constraints you faced in dealing with all the transformation of the local system, as you mentioned? Well, I think it's very important to have the collaboration of all the parties involved, eh? so the triple helix approach with uh, the companies and the local government and um, uh, the, the universities. But I think it always is very important to have the, uh, the organization power. Eh? You call it the powerhouse, but somebody has to pay for all those efforts. And um, it's very, we were talking about triple helix, um, but it's very interesting. The development company I'm working for is paid by the cities. Eh? The cities contribute every year from a percent of uh, the, the tax coming into the cities, they contribute to the development company to have a, an organization power to create this collaboration. It doesn't go by, the, by itself. Eh? You, you need to have an organization who facilitates, who brings people together. All the companies, all the universities are very busy with uh, running their own business. And so I think it's very uh, unique that uh, the mu municipalities uh, contribute to the regional collaboration, and it's very important because when you don't have this uh, organization power, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. And also, uh, you have to uh, work at different levels, so your own region, the six regions, the two provinces, and from this brain network, you collaborate with the Hague, uh, the, the political center of Holland, and also with the province involved, uh, we, we always look to the cross-border cooperation because that's, that's the issue, not, um, we had a big castle meeting with our friends from Belgium, we said, well, we can work together without those national governments. Uh, why always uh, look at The Hague or look at Brussels, so uh, we can collaborate with, uh, with our regions itself. So, great um, uh, development in, in uh, the organization uh, power and to look behind your own borders and see the collaboration. So that's, I think, the key issues uh, we, are, we are dealing with. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know whether there are some questions from, from the participants, some comments. Meanwhile, we are OK, please. Una pregunta para Christophe. Bien. Ha citado que han, han propuesto 19 proyectos sobre, sobre el tema del envejecimiento de, de la población por un volumen de, de mil, eh, millón y medio de, de euros. Me gustaría conocer 
ese proyecto de envejecimiento qué apartados tiene o qué capítulos contempla. Gracias. So basically, um, the basically the the idea of this is generally, um, or, or or to start a little bit broader, what we want to achieve in in this in this field. Um, we on the one hand set up a university um, or medical faculty uh, in 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 Linz. So we are more or less also the the link between industry and uh, and our our research, and so our idea here in this in this project or one of this this topic is, uh, as I already or already addressed, to bring companies who are not related to the to the to the um, medical field into the medical field. So in this project, we deal with like um, reducing hurdles um, or, or discussing on, on, on legal issues. So how can we bring the companies in? Or um, for instance, having the possibility for, for companies to, to, to test specific things in a, in a more or less protected environment, if it works out or not, and to, and to test it. So it's the, the focus is on the one hand on this aging society, but this covers, for instance, to be even more precise, the topic that we have to make sure that the aging so that the people can stay at home as long as possible before being uh, having to live in old people's houses or or to being more or less uh, sent to to hospitals so to to help them with technologies and 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 solutions to stay safe at home as possible and this covers then a quite quite broad range of, of different activities, but mainly helping people or, or technologies who are not yet in the in the healthcare field to enter. Okay, it's okay. Do you have some far comment? Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, please. Yes, okay. Yes, uh, I was comment that uh, in this effort to profit all the, the, the experience that uh, we can uh, find in the different organizations, industries, uh, governments, and so on, so no? uh, the problem is always how to, to manage, how to profit the different levels of knowledge that, that we find uh, in the different organizations. I mean, uh, technical knowledge, uh, mm, uh, expert knowledge, and basic knowledge. No, and uh, for us is uh, I think in, in the in the society, in the knowledge society, it's very important to 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 find the strategies to profit these different levels uh, that exist in all the organizations. No, the question for everybody is: uh, Do you know, or have you developed, or is there any experience or program to to to, to face this, this kind of problem. Yes, you. Well, um, it, it, it is, of course, a, a very, very, it's a big problem, and I think you have to, to organize it with, with different types of method, methodologies, because usually if I'm, somebody gives me a good piece of advice, it takes some time before I realize that it was a good advice, usually after the project. <laughs> Uh, and, and I think that that goes for, for very, very much of, of the persons. And, and I think that, that you, you have the second te technology or the method of Nonaka, and then you, you have to organize it formally. And, and, and you, you have to, to have a structured transfer of knowledge as, as, as a, as a complement of, 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 of the, uh, the transfer of knowledge that, that happens spontaneously. So, so I, I think you, you have to, to put resources into it because it's just not a question of showing something or having a seminar, but it's, it's a question of, of analyzing the practices, analyzing the whys between, behind, be, between the practices, and, and then to work in a systematic way with, with the, the partners that, that you, you are 
considered relevant. So I, I think it, it has to be organized in, in a form of, of transnational learning complementing a spontaneous change of knowledge. Then, then, then it's, it's we also it, it happened would happen like a form of a knowledge spiral that that, that more and more people realize uh, the ideas that, that that were brought forward. So it, it takes time, but I think you have to organize it. If I have the something on that, uh, if yes. you, if I may, uh, I would say that uh, there was someone who also mentioned the fact that uh, apparently you were the one. Uh, uh, that apparently are sharing the same language, but this is not uh, actually what is happening. The, the, the wording is the same, but the meaning and the understanding of the same wording is different. This means that uh, from uh, uh, building up a capacity to have a different level of knowledge sh shared and uh, mixed in a sound way, often there is a, a role which is played by a catalyzer, a facilitator, someone, some institution, somebody, some people who are actually acting in between, facilitating, establishing real substantial communication. And very often this is uh, the way for uh, enabling some dynamics happening, because ingredients are there, but there is no one able to cook <laughs> the cake as at once because of the lack of uh, the chief working on that. I think this is also a point which is relevant in, in the case where this is working, no? And I think these cases are cases where this was true. No, to De nuevo, para, para el señor Christophe, usted ha mencionado el tema del envejecimiento y no ha citado más que el, el tema de la salud, no ha citado ningún otro tema. Y yo quisiera hacer una pregunta concretada con esta. Han hablado ustedes de importantes proyectos de movilidad. Dado que aquí se va a hacer eh, un centro también de envejecimiento en pasajes, como ha mencionado el señor diputado general, me gustaría saber... En el área de la movilidad, si han tenido el foco mirado en hacer ciudades más amigables para las personas mayores, han ha mejorado el tema de, de transportes que sea para personas que tengan problemas de discapacidad, etcétera, etcétera. Nada más. Thank you very much for the question. Um, it is really, in this case, it's mainly a topic which is dealt with our um, um, automotive cluster, which is then talking about or dealing with this topic of connected mobility and autonomous driving. And this, for instance, deals with many of these issues. This deals, for instance, with when I'm uh, driving autonomous and my car doesn't have any sound, that people who, uh, who are maybe, for instance, disabled or who are, uh, who are blind, what can happen so that they, uh, that they are on the safe side. So, and also the system, where can I store my, my car, um, smart parking and all these different issues so that, that, I, that I can reduce traffic in the, in the city as such and, and make, a, make a better, let's, let's say, uh, life for the people there. So they, this is then a topic which is more or less a 360 degrees point of view on mobility as such, where the topic of like aging society is a very, very crucial issue, uh, but which we in, in, in the field of, of healthcare right now do not really uh, tackle that much. But maybe to, to give you uh, an example so that it shows that these different areas are not disconnected. We have all our different clusters and networks located under one roof and they are all on, uh, on one floor. And we share one coffee machine where the people come together and exchange on specific issues, challenges, and, and try to cooperate on specific things. So basically, then we had a, an example with, with the timber and furniture cluster and the automotive cluster, for instance, that there was a new um, directive from the automotive car producers and they told us, well, the cars, uh, the doors have to close in this specific way and our producers weren't capable to do so. 
and then they exchanged with the people from the timber and furniture cluster and they had solutions for this specific issue to say, well, you have to do these and these specific things uh, to fulfill the criteria. So meaning that uh, in explicitly the topic of uh, autonomous driving and connected mobility is not really explicitly highlighting exclusively the topic of, let's say, aging society, but it is a very, very crucial issue in this respect. And uh, yeah, just to hopefully answer your question in that way. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all your presentations. I'm going to make it in, in Spanish. Uh, mi pregunta va dirigida para Jerker Johnson, pero me gustaría también que la complementaran nuestros otros invitados. Es en relación a, a las regiones eh, como puntos focales de aprendizaje y estas cuestiones que, que se han presentado a lo largo de la mañana, pero sobre todo la habilidad que tendrían las regiones para eh, desbloquear vamos a utilizar esa palabra, desbloquear determinados recursos que tal vez pasan desapercibidos y que pueden aportar al discurso de desarrollo y de construcción pues, eh, un valor añadido, diferenciado y, y de calidad. Esto tiene mucho que ver con, con las resistencias, muchas veces con los bloqueos que tenemos dentro de las regiones y las nuevas configuraciones que casi siempre se basan en una nueva gobernanza. En este sentido, alguna experiencia, anécdota que, que podáis aportarnos. Gracias. I mean, there's, there's two, two elements of the problem. I, I mean, uh, if you look in, into uh, lock-in or, or you look into the focal groups where we are discussing the problems um, of, of, of the gaps, and then, then you look into the lock-in situations, you would have two types of lock-ins. You, you would have a, a type of, of, of lock-in where the companies are not able to, 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 add, to be exported themselves, but they are depending on on, on uh, other companies. Then you could have a political lock-in as well, that, 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 that you, you, are, you are not only, you, you are not only, um, that ideas doesn't advance, that, that you don't work in new ways, you are you're not taking on board smart specialization, but you are maybe smart washing your, your old strategies, old ways of working. Now, for, for the companies, it is very dif difficult bec because when they have time, they don't have money, and when they have money, they don't have time. Uh, and and, and uh, th this is, 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 a, is a problem, and I think here comes the, the ways of, of, of trying to look to, it, to different projects. I, believe, I also believe very much in, in, in transnational learning. A small region, if you work with, with, with the smart specialization, we will, we will learn from other regions because we will understand what the platform is saying, we will understand what they're doing in in the other regions because we speak the same language. So I think these ways of working, ways of uh, solving it, we have done things with the Internet of Things, we have tried to do different things, but we would be very much open to, to look into how to, to, to break an economic lock-in. Then if, if you look into the, to the political lock-in, uh, change is not necessarily coming from your organization. I mean, if, if I've been working with something for 20 years, and if somebody comes up with something very smart, of course I will ask that, why didn't I think on that myself for 80 years ago? And, and in, in this, this, way is, this way, I think that you have to, be, you have to, to build a, a, a partnership of, of, of entrepreneurs or, or those who are interested in, in this, these questions and, and in, in these uh, things and start to develop it. I think also that, that, that um, International partnerships are very good. Uh, if some, the same people discuss the same things as they've been doing for 20 past years, they are maybe like, likely to come into with the same solutions. But if you bring somebody in from outside, everybody will do, do the, a little better. And all, also different ideas, you have to have a mentality open to this. This has to do with structures and, and cultures. In Finland, we are always thinking on, on very, that why are the Swedes doing better than we are? <laughs> and that, that, that is always a problem for us, so, so, sort of, that when we grow with 1%, they grow with 2%, and then we, we would like to go with 3%. <laughs> and, and, but I think one of the secrets, I think, in, in Sweden is, is an organizational culture. You listen to, to youth, you listen to young people, you listen to new employees, you are less hierarchical. And, and in this, this, uh, 
Uh, these are all questions that, that are very much linked to, to preparing the ground. So, so summarizing, I think that in the companies, I think you have to recognize the problem. I, I think you have, have to, and I think that you can look on how other people are doing. I think transnational partnerships will bring new, new ideas. Uh, the political process, the same thing almost, that, that, that you have to build a partnership for those who are, are motivated by change and, and see these possibilities in this. And of course, in, in any change, there will be resistance. I mean, the resistance is, is likely to come from science. I mean, all universities are, are say that innovation is, is the same, same as more research, especially when, we, when we, are, we are using budgets all the time. So, 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 so it's not a resistance-free political change. Yes. There are some additional comments. Maybe uh, just one. So I, I fully agree. Maybe to to add one one specific thing, what we do uh, to overcome or one idea to overcome such resistance in specific areas. Um, I, to start with a little example, we have the Rosenbauer. This is the world market leader for firefighting cars, and they are running two production chains next to each other. They produce the same car, and the one production chain there are most probably I would say. Last time when I was there, maybe 80 people working, and the other, in the other, maybe three or two or four, something like this. So the one thing is completely automatized. The others is very, very much with handcraft thing. And the question is, uh, what will they do? So Rosenbauer will definitely go for the thing which makes them most competitive. And in the worst case, they have to lay off people. And that's, that's, that's an issue. So we set up a kind of, as I said already, this kind of maturity model with, uh, with uh, where we measure the readiness level. We develop a, a specifically a human resource related maturity model on the field of advanced manufacturing, meaning to identify in a very, very early stage, what does it mean for a company who wants to become ready for advanced manufacturing, which skills they need, what skills the people who are already involved in the companies have, and how to manage these kind of gaps. So how can we either find, make them ready for, for this change, uh, find other opportunities, and so on. And, and I, we, I, we are far away from having a solution for it because, well, 80 people there, three there, it's, it's quite, a, quite a gap. But this is something where we at least work on and, and try to help to find possibilities uh, to, to, to support uh, the staff, not to, uh, to oppose this kind of change completely, but to, to adapt to it. And then there are also, I think, big questions on political sides. Like, uh, like what kind of social system do we want? How, which kind of adaptations do we want? Where do we get the, 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 um, our, our taxes from? If, if we, so I think these are then, uh, have to then to be decided on other levels. So then, well, but this is, can really change the paradigm in, in a very, very broad range. Hola, gracias. Yo tenía una pregunta eh, relativa a eh, en todos estos equipos de trabajo, en los casos que se han expuesto, parece que uno de los papeles clave eh, que tienen los, los integrantes del grupo es la universidad, ¿no? la investigación y la propia universidad. Entonces, aquí en nuestra experiencia de, del País Vasco, en la universidad que tenemos, se ve claramente esta implicación de la universidad en una, por ejemplo, que es la Universidad de Mondragón, que es una universidad ligada a una corporación corporativa. ¿no? Entonces parece que ahí la universidad, la investigación, sí que está más centrada en servir a los intereses de, de la propia sector productivo que tiene. ¿no? Lo que me gustaría saber es eh, cómo se consigue que una universidad que puede estar o no ligada a los intereses productivos o, o comerciales de, de un país... ¿Cómo se consigue que se ligue tan directamente a, a los intereses de la región, por ejemplo, en sus casos? ¿no? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo han conseguido que la universidad pública, por ejemplo, que pueda estar haciendo su propia investigación ligada o no, no sé, 
al sector productivo se implique de esta forma tan directa al sector productivo. Si se hace por invitación, se buscan los eh, agentes que estén más ligados a las áreas que se quieren desarrollar. ¿Cuál ha sido su experiencia en ese sentido? Gracias. No, in, 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 in Finland, we, we have a, we are following the German system and, and uh, with that we have the, the, the University of Applied Science that you, they are mixing um, practice with, with, with experience based. And, and uh, um, we made a gap analysis and, and if, you, if you go to the handbook of implementing smart specialization, here is, is from page 84 to 86 we're describing on, on how, how we work with Norway, that we are piloting an experience, this experience in, in Norway because in the gap analysis they showed to be very, very well working. Now, on a more general level, to, to, to answer the question that, that, that you have uh, uh, curiosity-driven research and you have demand-driven research, and there are two sides of the coin, so they are, they are both needed, of course, uh, but the, the curiosity-driven research should stand by, uh, by academic merits. That, that some, somebody says that, that, that uh, you have a referee saying that this is a good research that we will finance it. And the demand driven research should be financed by, by the, the demand. So it doesn't have to be good, but it has to be, be needed in, in a way. The problem starts when uh, curiosity driven research comes to the region and saying the region needs this because it has not been financed by, by, the, by the academic sources. So, 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 so it's, it's, uh, I see this as, as, as two sides of, 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 of the coin that you should not mix. In, in a word, if you, go, if you go for science, it is very good, and then you should be, be judged by, by the academic merits on it, but by, in a process, if you go for, for being a connected with region, you should be judged by, 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 by the demand. And, but the problem is when these are getting mixed. We have also a lot of effort in uh, building campuses, so the high-tech campus in Eindhoven and the Camelot campus in uh, Limburg, where all the three parties are involved. Eh? So the, the companies on the campus in Eindhoven there are working 8,000 people of uh, companies of the university work together with a whole lot of different uh, nationalities. Um, and that's, and that's the, the collaboration to uh, to invest in research and development. We've got some knowledge institutions derived from the uh, universities. And I think that works very well. And also the university stimulates the companies in one way. Uh, they believe very much in what I told the photonics, uh, the work with light in, uh, in the future. So now the question is addressed to the companies. How can we do this together? And as well, one of the, uh, the big companies is asking uh, the university, well, we, What's the next stage uh, of uh, real fundamental research and then working together with the applied uh, uh, sciences? So it's a real mix with company demands, uh, fundamental research, and working together, for example, in campuses, which is students and the PhDs to develop the new techniques and to innovate together. So that mix up, it's not easy, it takes a long time, but <laughs> that's the way it works in, uh, in the South Africa. Netherlands. To just to say something, and it's also a question that what you are we are saying right now is that um, actually your system is working as a regional innovation ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, in most cases, uh, there is an assumption that there is a, an innovation ecosystem working, but in fact it's not because of some some silos thinking, uh, rules where it's difficult to, to break down, no? usually they're, they're resistant to change. And uh, according to your opinion, what are the, your experience? What are the key elements that are actually enabling a system becoming a regional innovation ecosystem? W what are the key players, the, the, the key factors that are enabling that to happen, in, or enable, in your cases, that to happen? Well. <laughs> 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 That's not an easy one. <laughs> well, 
pretty <laughs> pretty good question actually not that easy and i think it's uh, it's actually all about people because uh, the thing is when when you take the example of upper austria and we have like 1.4 million inhabitants and we would take the assumption that everybody that we know everything in our little e ecosystem and we c that we can do everything on our own i think we are definitely barking up the wrong tree so basically we need corporations with different areas also outside your austria austria has just 8 million inhabitants so even austria as such cannot cannot cover everything so i think we need in the in the core driving seats of of like politics of research of industry really the open minded people who say well it would be nice to have the second the third or the fourth campus here i don't know in linz but maybe we don't go for it because the others in vienna are better there and we pool our resources or there are people in munich who know it maybe even better and we cooperate in specific areas and then it would be great to say we have our niche in specific areas of research in in upper austria there are the people in munich who know it in this and that area better and the others in the netherlands are great in this field and when we build up a cross border ecosystem where we can send our students or industry to the experts in the netherlands they send the guys to us uh, in austria and that would would really uh, really bring something on the ground and in this case i think it's really uh, you you need such such open minded people who really yeah as i said get rid of the box and not even just think out of the box <laughs> agree eh? and you have to focus on your strength eh? you can build a new ecosystem from something you haven't got in your region and, and that's very important then the collaboration with other regions so i mentioned and uh, tomorrow is also i think an item with some great programs like the vingard initiative to work together with more regions with 30 regions to add uh, from your ecosystem working with your ecosystems like christoph said well I think that's the future. My concern is, do we have the people eh, <laughs> to do all the, the work together? And we're suffering a, a problem with uh, sufficient talent. Um, so that's that's really a problem uh, for the future. And I think that's always also uh, a thing to discuss. How can we collaborate? We've got a training program with the Basque Country, but perhaps we should do more in uh, focusing on collaboration with exchange of talents. Comment on it, or may, maybe maybe through a crisis. If if you look, for instance, on Basque Country, I'm, I mean, uh, you're considered as, as among the best in Europe. If you know about that, <laughs> and 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 in politics towards smart specialization and the system and the working system, and behind this lies a crisis. That that, that you have an industrial crisis that you're you're you are you're facing in in Finland. We got too comfortable with Nokia. Uh, talking that, that we could always be the best in the world in Nokia and then, and, and, uh, then it falls down overnight and, and then, then, you, then you have to start rethinking and, and uh, then it's a question of, of, of do you have an open-minded culture where, where you have an entrepreneurship that, 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 ca that can, uh, that where the information flows of the possibilities so, so the entrepreneurs can, can, can grab dabs. And what is our, our new new ways of getting up? And so I think that 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 you would have a flow of of information and knowledge within the regions that reach you know, reach the entrepreneurs, and then then you have to have some of a collective understanding that that this is not working anymore. We have to do something. And I think that that would be be sort of what you have to go for. Me gustaría tocar una cuestión que ustedes han hablado, pero luego yo no he oído ninguna explicación concreta sobre el tema de la cogobernanza. Para nosotros es un tema francamente importante, es la participación, diríamos, de, de representantes, diríamos, del pueblo o, o, o civiles, diríamos, en la gobernanza. Simplemente a nivel indicativo, en Euskadi se ha, se ha aprobado una ley del tercer sector que de alguna manera faculta a los representantes sociales, que son en este momento el 80%, están organizados a, ser, eh, a consultar o a tener el trato directo bien con el gobierno 
autonómico o con, el, o con los gobiernos forales, con los gobiernos forables, o con, los, o con las juntas generales, que son los parlamentos eh, también de aquí. Entonces, esto es un poco parecido a lo que a mí me explicaron hace unos años de cómo lo hacen en Dinamarca. Dinamarca, parece que está organizado también por, por municipios de, de 3.000 habitantes y las personas, de, diríamos, eh, participan y son consultadas en la población de los presupuestos, de los proyectos, etcétera, etcétera. ¿Ustedes tienen algo por el estilo de eso? As I said, with a, with a smart specialization strategy there, it was exactly this process where the, the industry, but also representatives from different areas, research institutes and so on, were explicitly asked during drafting this kind of smart specialization strategy, what kind of projects in particular you would like. So this was already very precise project ideas and not just uh, like saying, just identifying the, the core strength areas, but more or less practically breaking it down to what kind of project that could be so that the people who were really then finally drafting the smart specialization strategy and derived from this um, also the, the giving more or less the guidelines of how to apply and, and how to get these kind of funding schemes could more or less see where they should develop these kind of projects too. So the, the, the people from, from Upper Austria or the, the industry as such was already involved in this whole process of developing the smart specialization strategy, but not just on a meta level, but on a very precise uh, level if it comes down to, to the field of projects. <laughs> there is one additional question I, I would like to raise for to complement this. Is all this is usually done when uh, the smart specialization strategy is in the stage of designing. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the co-governance during the implementation? Because uh, I think that when you are designing and conceiving something as a strategy, it's very good and very often there are procedures, very, very open and so on. But the next day you have the, the strategy there in place and you start implementing it. How in your experience, does it work at the continuous involvement and co-governance of the same strategy when it is in the making? In our case, it's more or less a, always a one-year process uh, where not then the companies as such are involved, but more or less uh, like this, let's say, this more or less advisory board, what I mentioned, who gave advice to the politicians on regional and on, on national level, where key industrialists are represented, uh, where the key people from research are involved as well. And uh, then we have more or less the external evaluators uh, on the regional and, and national level who uh, involve, uh, who are constantly involved where to adapt. But you're right, then it's not a broad process in this case if it's running, but really uh, maybe then in this, even in this evaluation phases, then just like selected industrialists and so on are involved but it's not such a big process as it was right at the beginning. And it will be the same that it will be a very broad process from 2018 onwards when we will develop the new process. Yeah, so a more focused one. We, we, are, we are looking in, in, into that problem as well. If you, if you look in our approach, I mean, you, you are asking about the innovation network and you're asking about the expectations of, of, of the partners. Now, in order to, to answer that question, you have to be quite high up in the hierarchy. Uh, I have also worked, for instance, with, with, with leader. I was a manager of leader a long time ago. And, and, and there's a lot of, of, of strength in the leader process because it's built on, on, on the village and, and it builds on, on empowerment of people. And, and we should have an open social process that complements this process because this, this point is, is, is a very, very important one. But, but we are having a structured dialogue, and that structured dialogue is very difficult to, to open up. But, but we, could, we could try with a complementary dialogue, but before we start asking people and have, have participatory methods, 
we have to know how we use the results, because that is uh, using people's using people's uh, time in a wrong way. If if we if they come up with something and we don't take it in, into account, but but I think that point is is a very good one. I think it, it has to do with, with open social social innovation. I think it could be a complementing thing that we should do in in our approach as well, because I, I see see the strength in it. We should also consider that 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 uh, smart specialization is the politics that that is geared towards innovation. There may there may be be other very important politics, say tourism or whatever that you may consider as a very important policy for the region, but where you don't, you are not expecting to find the innovations. So you have to separate between these two. But, but, but of, of course, uh, um, to find solutions outside the box, you have to go out, outside the box maybe. <laughs> so so, so your, your point is a very valid one. No, that's, that's true. Eh? We always talk about triple helix, and you mentioned also multi helix, eh? how to involve the population. Well, it's a challenge. The municipalities do a lot of this by meeting up with a questionnaire. So it's very important to, to get everything aligned. I think the next challenge is also we can talk about smart specialization, about funds, but now we see with the Brexit, and perhaps it's tomorrow the subject, but we have, uh, uh, we are looking. Yeah, what's the next period going to be? Eh? We have a struggle in Holland. We got five regions, uh, and now the Dutch government. We have to talk with them and keep this regional uh, policy. Eh? Don't combine all those funds to national funds, which sometimes is the issue now because the funds are really getting very low. In the south of Holland, we've got 100 million of regional fund for seven years. So you can think about: Is that eh? we got such a big? Process meetings and uh, a lot of meetings is 100 million in seven years, and then you have to uh, um, do all uh, kind of processes uh, to to get the projects uh, funded. So there's a lot of discussion, and now the next phase is uh, that's very in interesting. Now is that now we, we build our own regional strategy from the south of Holland, but let's now start building this regional strategy with our neighbours, with Belgium and with Germany together. And you and I don't know if you know it, but you got 10% of your funds you can invest in France, and France can invest 10% in you. So that is really interesting for the next step, <laughs> uh, to, to combine your new strategic uh, specialization with your neighbors, and then uh, gain with uh, the, the, the cooperation together. So that's new, uh, the new agenda. Well, it's it's getting very uh, interesting because I think the funds are going down. <laughs> there is one further and possibly final question, I think. So you are the lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> A ver, tengo una pregunta concreta porque en esas imágenes que se han puesto por dos de los ponentes de la antigua industria ¿no? y la, con ocasión de una crisis, la nueva industria, ¿no? la, la reconversión que ha habido, se ponía como una fuerza negativa, como algo que se dejó atrás, la fuerza de los sindicatos, ¿no? de Strong Work Organizations, que se quedaron a un lado y eh, impedían el cambio ¿no? y cómo eh, el nuevo contexto posibilita el cambio. Mi pregunta es la siguiente. En este nuevo talento que se pide hoy en día, los nuevos titulados eh, abiertos de mente que se contratan y que son tan necesarios, eh, ¿están bien pagados en las regiones que ustedes representan? Porque aquí tenemos una, bueno, una mala noticia, o no sé, una buena y mala noticia, que es, es verdad que los sindicatos impedían el cambio, vamos a decir, ¿no? se aferraban a los intereses que tenían y... y y bueno, protegían a los intereses de los que tenían, pero nosotros ahora nos hemos pasado justo a la otra orilla, de forma que los nuevos talentos, los nuevos ingenieros e ingenieras hoy en día, pues cobran en las empresas, eh, como la señora de la limpieza de la antigua, del antiguo sistema, y luego además no tienen una jornada laboral, trabajan sin horas. ¿Esto les pasa también a ustedes en sus países? Yes. Uh, stop. <laughs> I take the ball. I no, think, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But no, but 
Okay, um, ba I fully agree on, on what, you, what you said that by, for us back in the 90s it was def or the 80s it was definitely the case that key actors were more or less uh, yeah, avoiding change as such. And by that time, these labor unions were like, like, like avoiding any kinds of, of structural change, which was definitely necessary. I think by now, and, and this was maybe also something what I tried to show a little bit with this idea of this, uh, this um, approach where we said we want to look on the, how the region is changing in the field of advanced manufacturing, but taking this human perspective in mind, we, we have really to ask ourselves, and it doesn't matter now if you are talking about labor units or whatever, what kind of society we want to have, because if everything is produced without people and we have a huge production sector with a huge bunch of people and we do not need them anymore, we have to find other solutions as such. And I do not want to say we need labor unions or not, so that's not, not my issue, but I think we need in our society uh, some, some ideas how to tackle these kind of changes that there, there is a social uh, uh, link that, that we, we think, okay, it's worth working together and that I'm, I'm fairly paid for the work and so on. So it cannot be the case that it's expected that everybody works 60 hours a week, parallel loses its job uh, each day and then still being happy for having a day uh, a job on daily basis. So I do not talk pro or contra, contra a specific group, but I think that generally uh, that this is a big question and a big challenge, not for just a region or a country, but or even on the on European level. How can we secure our social system as such uh, and to make it ready for the future? And I, I frankly say I do not have uh, a solution for that <laughs> either. I was coming here yesterday, so I went to the beach and I had a book about Donald Trump <laughs> that I was reading. And, and, and what has happened in the United States, in, in, in Great Britain, and to a lesser extent in Europe, is, is that the rich has gone richer and, and the poor has gone poorer. And, and um, it is, of course, I, I, mean, I mean, you have tax havens, you, you, you have, you have uh, bigger income disparities, as, as pointed out by, by the French economist Piketty, and, and with this forced the trust in society. Uh, now, how to work with this? I, I think that, that trust is, is everything. Of, of course, I mean, if, if you are distrust, you will organize yourself in, 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 in strong unions and you will say, say no. Finland is, is, is fortunate to have, have a quite high level of trust. We still believe that our politicians are good and that they are thinking on us. And, and that, I think, is, is the main, main asset that we are having in, in the country. But, but I, I think that, that, that for this, we would we, we need more, more European uh, policies on, on, on conduct conduct. I mean, you, you, you see, you see, you see what, what I've been working a lot in the third world. And, and, and they used to, the poor countries used to speak about, about the company should have a a code of uh, Código de Comportamiento for, 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 for men behaving towards. And, and I think we have to have, have this, and I think it comes through a European cooperation. I, I, or at least I hope, because I, I don't like the alternative. <laughs> now, the people have paid very good in Holland, so that's not a problem. And we got the whole system of collaboration because we had to fight uh, against the water. So we had the polar model where the unions always talk with the employers. Very good. We only have one uh, more system from the government that's really very in favor of flex work. Yeah? So no, there are not many f uh, and, uh, um, employment contracts. It's all flex. and. So that's a problem sometimes. Um, I think uh, the salary is not a problem, but the funds for education, that's the next problem. How can we educate all those people for the new jobs we don't know yet? So that's going to be the real challenge. <laughs> With this challenge open, and that I think is a fortifying one, I think we can thank you, everybody, for that. And I give you the floor for closing the session. Thank you. <laughs>